Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. As you might have guessed from the background, we are back in Scotland and as I always like to do when I come home, we're going to review a couple of my local beers. So we're going to a brewery who are only two or three miles away from me actually. We're going to go to Harveston Brewery in Alva and we're having a taste of one of their limited edition beers. This is the Haggis Hunter, which is a 4.1% tawny ale. As far as I can figure out, this is the latest reincarnation of this beer. It seems to have been brewed on cask back in like 2006. 2008 and they've released it again on bottle just this year actually and the tawny ale as far as I can figure out is a, a kind of more hoppy version of the English bitters so it should be really quite nice and there's quite a few interesting hops in this one so very much looking forward to trying this one I always enjoy the harvesting beers so I hope you guys enjoy the review but anyway as is usual with my reviews I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other harvesting reviews I've done before there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do subscribe to the channel and as always please do get in touch and let me know the other beers and breweries that you guys would like me to check out you can also go into the channel homepage and search for beers based on country city or whatever and they'll all pop up so make sure you do that so as I've mentioned to you before, Harveston Brewery is one of the oldest craft breweries in Scotland. They were actually founded back in 1983 by Ken Brooker who used to home brew and he would invite people around to his house to taste his beer and make them give him back tasting notes and he really just learned his recipes through experimentation. But a few years later he decided that he wanted to brew professionally and so he converted an old steading and dollar into a small brewery back in 1986. But over the following few years they gradually added more beers to their repertoire and and Ken decided to properly invest in the brewery in 1989 and this was when he installed his first professional equipment. A lot of the older stuff was brewed using the like recycled dairy equipment which was quite interesting actually. But in 1994 they introduced their Shehalian beer which is the one that has made a huge name for itself. That's probably my favourite beer that these guys do. It's a lovely kind of grapefruity lager in fact. But the big break for the brewery came in 1996 when they won the Tesco Beer Challenge and this was when they got their first bulk order for the brewery and soon after this they produced their bitter and twisted flagship beer which is a huge export beer over to America. This was what kicked off their exports of course but since the turn of the millennium the brewery has become very very decorated and they've introduced the old engine oil porter which is a really popular export beer as well and this has since been barrel aged to create the Ola Doof series. I think it's a 12, 15 and an 18 you can get actually but in 2003 they moved away from their brewery in Dollar and started up a new one in Alva which is just a few miles down the road but the brewery was actually sold to the Caledonian brewery from Edinburgh in 2006 and this was then bought in turn by Heineken in 2008 although they didn't actually want the Harveston brewery and so it was bought by a group of the Caledonian brewery directors and it now runs as an independent company which is pretty good and you know these guys are quite a well regarded craft brewery in Scotland as I say one of the oldest ones and they produce some pretty awesome beers and when you're talking about craft beer these guys are a little bit more old school these guys produce some really nice kind of sessionable ales but they don't produce really the kind of American style beers that are um, that are becoming quite widespread actually these guys are a bit more of an old school brewery but their beers are pretty damn nice I have to say so just to list the other beers you can get from these guys of course there's the Shehalian there's the Bitter and Twisted they've got an IPA now as well actually which I still need to try there's the Old Engineers Oil the Engineer Reserve which is the heavy alcohol uh, export version of the old engineers oil. There's the Ridge, they also have the Broken Dial which is an amber ale, that's a really nice one and then they've got the Ola Duv 12, 16 and 18, sorry I said it was 15 but it is 16. They've also got various special editions of the Ola Duv and they've got one called Ola Sleegis now which is a lager beer, I think it's the Shehalgen aged in some whiskey casks so you'll see me review that one pretty soon and of course they've got various specials that they release every often, every so often like Haggis Hunter and various cask beers as well. So yeah that's enough about Harveston Brewery for the moment so let's actually get on to the tasting of this beer itself. So I'll just bring up the camera and let you have a little look at this before we open it up. So as you always get with Harveston Brewery there you can see is Harvey the Mouse playing with his little net. It looks like he's catching butterflies or thistles or something like that. But I always love the little Harvey the Mouse. They've changed their artwork a little bit recently. I'll just bring down the light and let you see this a bit better. 
there you can see Harvey the Mouse is on the bottle cap and on the back it just has a little bit of a blurb about this beer. So it says, as a true Scot, Harvey doesn't head to the chippy for his traditional Scottish supper. No, he's away to the hills to capture one of the fearsome haggy in his special haggis net. It's thirsty work hunting the reclusive wee beastie, which is why we brewed this spicy, fruity amber number. Well hopped and brewed using pale and crystal malts, its rewarding bittersweet flavours are just the job to soothe a bruised ego on the night's Harvey returns with an empty net. net. So I guess this is kind of a wee thing, it's maybe a wee jibe at kind of foreigners, they always tell, we always used to tell some of the English cadets in the, when I was in the Air Force cadets that the haggis was a wee monster thing that ran around in the highlands and they used to believe us. So this is a kind of wee tribute I guess to that. But yeah, 4.1% tawny ale, as I said to you I think this is a more hoppy version of the bitter and I do have the hop profile for this one. So this one contains East Kent Goldings, Fugles, which are both English hops. The Salaya, I'm not sure where that one's from, but they've got American Cascade and Bobek, which is either Slovenian or Slovakian. I'm not sure. I think it might actually be a Slovakian Czech hop, but I'm not sure. You do get a lot of different ones, like Dana and things from, uh, from Slovenia as well, but it should be quite nice. So we'll get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. Very much looking forward to this beer, in fact. You always get some good beers from harvesting. So pop the bubbles, nice little bit of carbonation just rushing up the top there and we'll get this guy out and into the glass. So one thing I have to admit I do miss about living in Sweden now is some of these kind of golden ales that we get in Scotland. I actually really enjoy the nice sessionable golden ales that we have here. But in Sweden of course you get the nice dark Baltic porters which are lovely lovely beers. So yeah, as you can see this beer has poured a really nice golden amber colour. There's a solid finger and a half of a frothy white head on this one. Quite a bit of carbonation sticking towards the side of the glass, but quite a lot of little bubbles going up towards the bottom of the head too. If I put my fingers behind the beer, you can see that it is quite transparent, but it looks absolutely lovely. So yeah, not much more to say about that. Let's have a look at the aroma then. This one actually smells quite malty. I'm getting more bready characters. a nice sort of <clears throat> white breadiness coming out of this one. You can pick out the sort of sweet kind of biscuity, almost not quite corny sort of, but that sort of digestive biscuity character you get from this one. Sort of buttery biscuit I would say. I don't think there's any richer caramel to it though, it's definitely a kind of grainy, uh, sort of pale malt biscuity bitter thing that's going on here. But yeah, it's, it smells really really nice actually. I always enjoy these th these beers. It, you can detect the sort of English bitter notes from this one, to be honest, which obviously it's um, it's modelled on that style, but it does smell nice. You've got the nice hoppy characters on top of that. You can get a little bit of the grassy sort of floral things, which is what you expect. You know, when you've got East Kent Goldings and Fugles in there, you're going to get a good bit of grassiness. You can also get a bit of earthiness too, and that's definitely an English hop characteristic. But there's a bit, there is, I think there's a little bit of grapefruit in there, which will be from the Cascade, of course. And there's some kind of lighter, almost citrusy notes, which is probably from the kind of the Bobek and things like that that's in there. I remember the Bobek being a sort of nobleish, almost German noble hop, if you like. The Slovenian hops were kind of like that, and the Slovakian ones as well. I really wish I could remember which country it is that Bobek is from. I would guess by the name that it's probably a Slovakian hop rather than Slovenian. But, yeah, it does smell nice. As I say, it's kind of floral and grassy, as you would expect from the hops. There's a little bit of earthiness in there. You can get some of that noble hop character as well. There's a little bit of grapefruit, I think, from the Cascade, and there's also some lighter citrus. The malty side of the beer is more bready, but it's quite biscuity with that kind of sweet, biscuity, syrupy character as well. So. Yeah, it should be quite a nice one for us to try. So let's get stuck into this guy then. So this is the Haggis Hunter, a 4.1% tawny ale from Harveston Brewery, one of my local breweries here in Clipmanninshire in Scotland. Slanja. Mmm. That's quite interesting. Now, one thing I should always say about these beers, <coughs> when it comes to the English bitters, it's not the style that I'm most a fan of. I'm not really a great fan of some of these, but you do get some very, very nice ones. This one is really interesting just because it has that typical malt base, but it's a bit more hoppy 
it's it really is just the hoppy character on this one is quite interesting. This one would be really nice on cask, but this is quite interesting because it's got a big, almost like German. It's almost got that kind of German nobly hop character to it as well. It's big and hoppy, but at the same time you've got that English malty bitter thing. So it is like I said, the tawny ale is really a big hoppy version of the English bitter. But this one works. I'm not always a, a big, as I say, I'm not always a big fan of these English style bitter beers, but this one seems to work quite well. And I can see what they're doing with it, because the English Fugo hop, it always gives you this sort of ashy flavour to the beer. And if it's used properly, it can be really nice, but if it's used wrongly, it can be very, very bad. But they've managed to use it quite well, and they're building a good bridge in this one by making the that sort of ashy character from the Fugles hop, I think, mix with the, the malt base in this one. But when it's just when it's pale malts and lager malts that are in this one, I would guess that are crystal malts and lager malts that are in this one, the malt base would be very light anyway. So it's quite interesting because you might think that 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 the malt base is quite big in this one, but I think really it's coming from that Fugo hop. But this is nice. I'd love to try it on tap and just see how it comes off. Because the mouthfeel is actually quite, is fairly light I would say. I'd love to see what it's like with, with a slightly thicker mouthfeel. Hmm. But that's pretty good. You know, the one thing you should remember about this beer, if you compare it to like a West Coast IPA or something like that, the hoppiness on this isn't going to blow your mind in that regard, but for this kind of old school style beer, it's actually got a good bit of hoppy character. So to describe the flavours a bit more, the middle of the, the palate is quite bready. There's a bit of that kind of cereally flavour in there, but that might as well, that I think that is probably complemented by the Fugles hop kind of spreading in a little bit there. But it's light and bready. There's maybe a little bit of a kind of biscuity, almost caramelly flavour in the middle of the tongue. But the middle part of the palate is definitely biscuity and gravy. <coughs> Pardon me. Mm. Mm. But the hoppy side of things is where it gets interesting because there's a lot of things going on there. So in the back corners of the palate, you've got that kind of earthiness. And that's probably coming from the Bobek hop a little bit, but I suspect mainly it's from the English hops. As you come further forward, it gets more grassy and floral. It's actually quite dark and floral aromatic as you come forward. It's got that around the front corners of the palate, there's a real dark floral aromaticity to this one, probably from the Cascade hop actually, because it's very dark and grapefruity and you get that big floral character from it. So that's probably where the nice that these big flavours are coming from. It could almost be a little bit piney actually. But around the front curve of the palate, it's a little bit more grassy and as you just go behind the front curve of the tongue there, you can get a little tiny bit of grapefruit flavour, which is from the Cascade of course, but that's quite minimal. It's more of a citrusy character that's coming off. But the real, the really prominent flavour in this one is the big dark floral grassy aromatic character and that sort of slightly earthy ashy flavour that's coming out of the Fugles hops. The English hops are standing out quite nicely in this one. I would say this is a this is a beer that isn't really like anything I've tried before. It's kind of like a fusion of different styles. It's like a big kind of almost English style paleo and then you've got the English malt base just uh, underneath that. So it's really interesting to see these kind of two things fused together. Hmm. Yeah, I mean this is a this is a good beer. This one, I would say, is definitely geared more towards people who like English style beers. You know, this one really is that more kind of old school style rather than going into the kind of American, the more kind of modern American style beers that you're finding a lot these days. But within that kind of category, within the more old school English style beers, this one is pretty good. I wouldn't hesitate to drink this again if it was on tap on some of the cast beers. I'd give it a go. I would say I always really love the Shahali and if I had the choice of all the harvesting beers and I was doing a little session it probably would be the Shahali I would go for but this one is a little bit different from that so if you like your beers to be a bit more hoppy for example 
a little bit more floral aromatic. This could be a good alternative to the Chihalian, I would say. If you like that more English bitter malt base, the, the, the Chihalian doesn't really have that. And I think the bitter and twisty doesn't really have that either. If you like that more kind of English kind of malty, bitter, bitter base in this one, then it's this is probably a good alternative for you. It's, it's a nice it's a nice beer, and I would say if you like these certain styles, you probably are going to enjoy this one. So let's have a little look at the mouthfeel then. Mm. But yeah, I would say this is fairly light bodied. It is pushing the mid bodied category a little bit. Carbonation on this one I think is quite active, and it helps bring out that sort of slightly ashy flavour from the Fugles, but it also helps promote the, the kind of floral character that you get in this beer. This one for me I'd say is more hoppy. It does have a good bit of hoppy dryness to it. There's a little bit of fruitiness and there is a bit of dryness from the malt base too, but how much of that is actually the Fugle hop, I'm not too sure. But overall, it's a pretty good beer. Like I say, if you enjoy English bitters and you enjoy English paleos and you would like the way... The real focus of this beer is how the, the kind of hoppy side of things from the English Paleo Fuses with the English Bitter style. This one I would say, this kind of Tawny Ale style, is <coughs> pardon me, is about how these two kind of aspects of the flavour go together. And it works pretty well. So yeah, it been really cool to review this one for you. The Haggis Hunter from Harveston Brewery in Alva, Clip Manager, Scotland. One of my local breweries and it's always cool to review different beers from these guys. So yeah, um, as always, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Make sure you go and check out my social media and things like that. Let me know in the comments section below your own thoughts on this beer. It's always interesting to hear from you guys. Let me know your favourite beers from this brewery as well. I've reviewed quite a few of them actually. Last beer I reviewed from these guys was the Raspy Engine, which was really nice actually. I would recommend that beer as well. Um, but let me know your favourite beers and um, I'll see if I can review them for you. Do give me suggestions and all that. Thank you once again for watching my beer reviews. Make sure you go and check out one of my breweries, my local breweries, Harveston Brewery from Alvin Clip Manager. I hope you enjoyed this review and until the next time, Slanja just now. Haggis Hunter from Harveston Brewery in Clip Manager, Scotland. Slanja.